the woman through a man. It says we were all like that. That means we were all dead spiritually. And it says fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But now it says we can come to Christ. And as we come to Christ, eternal life will come. Salvation will come. That deadness will vanish away. Look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he has loved us, even when we were dead, he sees. He's going back to that again. He wants you to understand. You might be walking about physically. You have physical life, but you don't have spiritual life. You don't have eternal life. We were dead, but now we're saved. He says he has quickened us together with Christ. Quickened us together with Christ. As we believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll say, Lord, I present myself to you. I accept without you, I've been dead. Without your grace, I've been dead. And without your salvation, I've been living a dead inch kind of life. I was dead to your commandments, dead in conscience, and dead in heart. But now I come to you, and it says, By grace are ye saved. Look at verse 6. And has raised us up together. That he is together with Christ. He raises us up. Resurrection power is coming in your life. And made us see together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's for everyone. The grace of God is available. And it says, it is through faith. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you turn away from your past, turn away from darkness, turn away from your weakness, turn away from your bad habits, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Gift of God. Eternal life, gift of God. Salvation, gift of God. Resurrection life, gift of God. And it is for whosoever will ask and receive, you'll have it today. I said you'll have it today. It tells us in Luke chapter 24 how to have that saving power that comes in our lives and it turns everything around and we're totally transformed and we're totally changed and his resurrection power works unhindered in our lives. How will it happen? Look at Luke chapter 24. Reading here from verse 46. Luke chapter 24, verse 46, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Already he is risen, and now as he rose, he came to speak to his own disciples. He said, It was written that before you can have life, before you can have salvation, before you can have the grace of God flowing into your life, before your name can be written in the book of life, Christ must die for you. But not only die, he must rise again. And now he tells us in verse 47, having known about the death of Christ, having known about the burial of Christ, have been known about the resurrection of Christ and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. It says, we'll preach 
and you will hear and you will receive his message of repentance. You understand? Sin deadens you. And sin kills everything that should be alive in your life. But now you turn away from that deadening sin. And you turn to Christ, the resurrection and the life. And then life from him will bring eternal life in your life. It will happen in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 10, after that repentance, after that turning away from all our sins and the bad habits that deadened our conscience, that deadened our lives, that deadened our spiritual life, now we turn to him in faith. But we must believe in his resurrection power. Look at Romans chapter 10. Verse 8, but what says it? The word is nigh thee, is near you. Even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that he is the word of faith which will preach, that he thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You see that? If you confess with your mouth that you cannot have life except from the Lord Jesus, you cannot have salvation except from the Lord Jesus, your trying by yourself will not do it. Your struggles will not do it. Your personal sacrifice will not do it. Your traditional religion will not do it. Salvation is found only in Christ. It says that if you will confess with your mouth and let God hear that confession and let everyone around you hear that confession and let your conscience identify with that confession that he that shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. He's saying that salvation, salvation from sin, salvation from the dominion of sin, salvation from the power of sin, salvation from the tyranny of sin, that salvation comes as you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus died for you. And that he rose again. And that in that resurrection, he brought your salvation, your justification. Look at verse 10. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. We don't believe unto sinfulness. We believe unto righteousness. We don't believe into darkness. We believe unto righteousness. We don't believe unto continuing to do evil. We believe unto righteousness. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You confess what you believe. And then real salvation will come. And is able to save everyone here tonight. I said, is able to save everyone here tonight. If you are not saved yet, it will save your soul. If you are not victorious over sin yet, tonight, resurrection power will come to you. You'll be victorious over sin in Jesus' name. If bad habits are destroying your life, tonight, as you bring Christ who says I'm the resurrection alive. You bring him to your life. All those bad habits he'll crush. He'll destroy. New life will come to you in Jesus' name. Can he do it? Look at Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 25. Wherefore? He is able also to save them 
to the uttermost. No matter how far you have gone in sin, the grace of God will go after you and reach out to you tonight in Jesus' name. No matter how impossible you thought that you could not be saved because you have gone so far and because your conscience, your heart has told you that this appears impossible, that seemingly impossible thing will be done by Christ with his resurrection power. Wherefore, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. But you must come. That come unto God by him. That is to come through Jesus Christ. And as you come by him unto God, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Verse 26, for such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. First John chapter 3, from verse 4. First John chapter 3. Reading from verse 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. If you are wondering what is sin, sin is transgressing the law of God. What does that mean? The Lord draws a circle on the ground. And it says, stay inside that circle. If you go outside that circle and you cross the line, you transgress. That's what he's saying. His word marks out the circle in which we are to live. His word gives the territory of the life we ought to live. And it covers every area of life, a moral life, a spiritual life, a interpersonal, interrelationship with other people. The Lord draws the line. He says, stay in this circle, then you're righteous. But because of the nature of Adam, fallen Adam, in man, every man goes beyond the circle he has drawn. And every time you go and cross that line, that's transgression, that's sin. That's why it says in verse 4, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. That sin has various names. When he says, thou shalt not steal. If you don't steal, you are inside that circle. If you cross that line and you steal, that's transgression, that's sin. When he says, thou shalt not commit adultery, he draws his circle. And as long as you stay inside that circle, you live a righteous life. But when you cross the line and you commit adultery, you have transgressed, and sin, transgression, brings death. And you can't save yourself once you are outside that circle. You cannot bring yourself in. Only Christ can do that. That's why it says in verse 5, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. It was manifested. He came to this world. So it will take away our sins. In the plural. Small sins, so-called. Big sins, so-called. Mortal sins, so-called. Secret sins, so-called. Public sins, so-called. Common sins, so-called. Occasional sin, so-called, every form of sin. 
Christ has come to remove sin from you and to remove you from sin, he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. But six, whosoever abideth in him sineth not. When he forgives our sin, it brings us back into that circle. And in that circle, as we abide in him, depending on his grace, enjoying his salvation, we will not sin, we will not go outside that circle again and cross the line. Whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Whosoever sinneth, how does that happen again? Because there is temptation coming from outside that circle. There is a magnet outside that circle. And that magnet or temptation drawing people. If you remain in the grace of God, in the strength of God, you will not yield to the temptation. But when you yield, that means you have committed sin and you are no more abiding in him. Little children, verse 7. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse 8, he that committeth sin is of the devil. You see that? It's always going up and down. He goes outside the circle. And then he cries, Lord, I've sinned, I've sinned. And then the following day, he goes outside the circle again. Lord, I'm sorry I've sinned again. And he keeps on going outside that circle. He committes, he transgresses. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that she might destroy the works of the devil. The time has come. He will destroy all the works of the devil. All the transgression he will remove. And then he will give you a new saving power. That saving power will keep you standing and will keep you victorious. You'll not be going outside that circle of righteousness again in Jesus' name. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Some people say, how do I know whether I'm born again or not? Is it by feeling? Is it by flash of light? Is it by an audible voice? The Lord is telling us that wants to receive Jesus into your heart. If Jesus is really there, is there in resurrection power. And because it's there in resurrection power, he gives you the power to live above sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For the seed of God, a seed remains in him. And he cannot sin. He cannot sin. He cannot sin. He will not be given excuses for sinning when he's really born again. He says, he cannot sin because he's born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. That resurrection power will work salvation in every life. No matter how far you've gone, the Lord Jesus will bring you back into that circle of righteousness. And the grace of God will keep you abiding and remaining in Jesus' name. Number two now, the strengthening power of his resurrection. The strengthening power of his resurrection. When he saves us, he also gives us strengthening power. Number one, saving power. 
salvation has come. Christ is your Savior. And Christ lives on the inside of you. And now for you to abide in that salvation and to abide in all the promises of God, he gives you strengthening and power. Look at First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It brings hope to us and it brings vitality into our lives and it makes us to have a great future in that salvation and it says the father god in heaven does that bringing us to a lively hope by the new birth we're begotten again and it's through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead to an inheritance in verse 4 incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away reserved in heaven for you the moment you are born again your name is written in the book of life in heaven and the spirit of god bears witness with your heart that you are saved you are born again your name is in heaven you also have the inheritance in heaven but look at the strengthening power in verse 5 who are kept by the power of God. Who are kept by the power of God. You see, the people who think they are saved, and there's no strength in power, and they cannot stand. They cannot withstand persecution, or they cannot stand at the time of temptation, and they're always falling, always falling. There's no real salvation there. New Testament salvation. New Testament salvation gives us the power that strengthens us against sin, against Satan, against all the temptations of society who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. I pray that power sustaining power in every challenge of our lives will work mightily in your life second corinthians chapter 12 second corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 9 and he said unto me and he said unto me remember god is no respecter of persons. As he said to Paul, he says to Peter. As he said to Peter, he said to John. As he said to the believers of those days, he speaks to the believers of this day. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. You cannot say my temptations are so many. That's why I cannot stand. My grace is sufficient for thee. You cannot say my bad habits in the past were so strong and they're unbreakable. That's why I cannot stand. It says my grace is sufficient for you. You cannot say my community is so dark and so dirty that I see so much sin, I see so much evil, and because of that, I cannot stand. He says, no, my grace is sufficient for you. You cannot say there is a, a companion, there is a partner, there is a wife, there is a husband. He is not born again. I am born again. 
but his life has such terrible negative influence on me that's why i cannot stand no it says for my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness he will overcome your weakness he will overrule your weakness you will be strong and the grace that brought you in into the kingdom that grace will abide in your life and that grace will make you victorious over evil in jesus name in the office where you are working if you're the only believer there and all the others are unbelievers and they do some bad financial things you will stand you will not compromise you will not join them to do evil you say what if they are many and mighty what if they are powerful it says my grace is sufficient for you you will live a victorious life in jesus name that's what resurrection power is all about that's what the strengthening power is all about it'll make you different it'll make you distinct and whatever challenges are around you victory has come in jesus name what if you're persecuted for righteousness that is you're righteous and you're endeavoring to keep inside that circle of righteousness and because of that all those who are unrighteous around you they persecute you and the persecution is so much are you going to fall because of that no you will not fall i say no i will not fall look at what it says in that verse 9 most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me the moment you say no to that temptation greater power will come to you the moment you say no to darkness drawing you to the world more power will come unto you therefore in verse 10 i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions i take pleasure in distresses i take pleasure for christ's sake look at this for when i am weak then